Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome back to Jamie Photography. Today I'm going to take you through um, processing of this, this shots and wreck boats on the River Orwell in Suffolk near Ipswich. And uh, blue sky, it was uh, a, a time delay, so uh, 13 seconds and uh, 16 millimeters, so quite wide, F11. ISO 50 so trying to get as long as possible to smooth the water out so uh, to make the river look really smooth as possible now there are a few dust particles on this shot from obviously dust on the sensor before I'd managed to clean it so we'll, we will clean those first uh, before we do anything else and there is also um, a little bit of a vignette around the edge I think I had the lens hood on uh, when I was at 16 millimeters so what we're going to do today is we're going to process this image do a sky replacement add in some color brighten the image up um, give it a bit of drama uh, maybe even a little bit of fine art but certainly drama is what we're aiming for so I'm going to deal with the dust first so I'm just going to brighten the scene slightly I'm just going to bring the exposure up a little bit not too much about point point six something like that oh and just for information uh, in, in the comments below, you'll find the link uh, to this this uh, raw file. Uh, you'll be able to follow along, uh, use the file yourself. So if, if, if you want to do that, pause the video now, download the video, uh, the um, the document, and uh, and then join in with me. So we're going to get rid of these dust particles. So the best way to do that is to go to uh, the healing tool here um, and select heal, not content aware. Select heal. Um, and then right down the bottom, you'll see in the bottom left corner down here, you'll see that there is a, um, a setting for tour overlay and um, a visualize spots checkbox and a slider. <clears throat> so what, 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 what this does is if we click visualize spots, it will actually turn it into a, almost a negative. It picks up on every line and every change of color, as you can even see the different changes in the, in the sky. Um, and if you bring that down a little bit, you can see that you, you get more or less of the visualization. So having it at maximum is fine. Um, what I also do is I turn the tall overlay to never so that I don't end up seeing the, um, the healing tools afterwards so that you can draw over them. Now I'm just going to make the brush a little bit bigger. You can see here in the middle, I'm, I'm wheeling my mouse to make the brush. So these dust spots, you just need to make the brush just slightly bigger than the dust spots themselves. If I zoom in and show you that, we come into 100%, use, hold down the space bar to move using the left key. You can see that the, the mouse itself, the, 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 mouse, the um, brush itself is just slightly bigger than the actual uh, dust dot. And then with it selected in, in heel, um, we're just going to click on that and it will just, just work your way around, clicking on those, those dots to get rid of them wherever you can see them so move over this way and you'd be surprised how many there actually is i i i don't clean my uh sensor as perhaps often i should do and by the way if you do choose to clean your sensor there, there is proper kits to use uh, to clean your sensor um, most camera sensors are coated with uh, a protective layer a type of gorilla glass a bit like the surface of a phone um, so they are quite durable um, but you will need to check with your manufacturer, manufacturer's manual just to be sure that uh, uh, it is okay to clean with the, the standard sort of tools that you can purchase online. Um, and then you just basically give them an, an ever so slight wipe over and that removes the dust from them. So uh, the best thing to do is not to change lenses very often. That's, uh, that's the way I try to keep the dust levels down. Oops, didn't need to do that. So I'm just going to zoom back out. So a uh, couple more in the sky there over this side. Just get those. So I'm literally just clicking round, taking out any little dust spots that are, uh, that are there. There's one on the water there as well. One in the sky there. I think we, we have them. I'm just gonna take these couple little dots out there as well. right so i can unclick the visualize spots and that will take us back and that certainly has tidied things up a little bit i'm going to take out this this bit of wood here so i'm just going to 
use the heel tool just to overlap it slightly just like that just to, so you just overlap it and it's amazing how good how good it works i must admit the new version of lightroom's uh, heel is is the similar very similar to what was there before the content aware can work in the right circumstances but generally i find if you're going against plain surfaces like this trying to remove clouds for example if i'm in here if i want to remove this cloud i i can just draw around that cloud like that make sure i filled in the center and it will it will remove it beautifully you know it will take it out out the shot so uh but the the content aware um is isn't isn't quite as good so uh, uh but it works in certain circumstances Anyway, I've I've done what I wanted to do there. I'm going to uh, I'm now going to uh, crop this image. Just want to take out these these vignettes. Um, so I'm going to go to the crop tool there. I'm going to come in until I cleared that side. Come in until I've cleared that side. Come up from the bottom and uh, just put the horizon in the center. There we go. Hit return. So now I've got a crop that. Uh, covers what I want to do here so I'm now going to um, just check that the horizon is absolutely straight so still in the crop tool you can go to the angle tool you can see over here this little spirit level if you click on that you can now click on on take this the the crosshairs and put them on the horizon where the water meets the land the seashore on one side and then bring it over this side and let go and it will actually correct and bring the level up perfectly level hit return again to accept that okay so now we're going to go into the basic functions we're going to uh, bring that brightness back down a little bit where it was at zero just double click on the word zero if you want to get to zero i'm going to open up the high uh, the the shadows so we can light up these these boats nicely and just bring down the highs just a little bit i don't want to bring too much out of that add a little bit of contrast and that contrast just make sure that there's a break between the sky and the water and then i'm going to go into the whites and the blacks now to do that i'm going to hold down the option or alt key and then i'm going to move the slider up until i see white now if you go too far you'll see that the white starts to come through and the histogram up in the top right corner clips you see the little triangle goes white if i bring it back down it goes it goes white purple blue and then off so the the blue is 90% and the and the purple is 95 and the white is 100% clipped so we want to just be just under that so i i'm going to come down a little bit more because i don't want the mask to be white there we go i'm going to go there and the same with the black still holding down the alt or option key i can move that down and you can see there's a clip there as well that that is is completely white at the moment so if i bring that up you'll see that there we go it's red red yellow white so we can go with the yellow so we're 95 percent clipped to the black so we've got the full contrast the full dynamic range now of the scene um, so now what i'm going to do is uh, i'm going to jump over into uh, photoshop and we're going to add uh, a sky into this scene um, because the blue sky is just a little bit boring i'm afraid so i like to cheer the images up a little bit so we're going to right click on the on the image itself we're going to edit in I'm going to go to adobe photoshop 2023 so um now now we're in this shot here we're going to go to file we're going to go to um sorry edit and then sky replacement in edit and then it will it will throw the first sky that's already there a sky i used previously here for example it's automatically thrown that sky in but i'm just going to use the little pull down arrow to the right there um, and that will give me all the skies that are already included with um, Photoshop and any skies that you may have and if 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 your sky isn't showing there and you know that you've got more you can just click this little plus and it will drag it in it will install it in here there it is and then I will click on that and it will apply it to the scene there we go so pick your own sky, that's absolutely fine. And then uh, when you've got that selected, now the thing is to don't click okay at this point. You want to come out of this sort of top module. And the way I do that is click on this little gray space up there here and just click that and it brings you back to the tools. Okay, so we're just gonna have a look on this side. Looks quite good. There is a, there is a little flip 
tick box here, a little, little check box. If you click that, the sky will actually swap from one side to the other. And uh, that works quite well. So I think I'm going to have it the other way because we've got the, the lightness on the on this side of the boats. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to use a few of these sliders just to make sure the edges are fine tuned in. It's pretty close actually already. The AI within Photoshop works very, very well uh, to, to try to find the best, the best position. What I will do is make the sky slightly darker. Here we go. And I'm going to try a little bit more cut temperature just to see how that looks because you can also go bluer as well you know to match this water look as well but we can correct that in a moment i can show you how we can how we can deal with that so um i'm probably going to go that way and um and then down the bottom here you've got a few a few uh, uh sliders and the lighting mode the multiply and screen are the two options screen gives you um, a much brighter foreground uh, and the um, multiply tends to try to blend them together uh, better. So you have to decide what you think works works best. I think probably multiply works best here. The foreground slider will light the, the objects in the center here. So if we go to the right, they'll go darker. If we go to the left, they'll go brighter. So we probably want to go darker with those just like that. Edge lighting, well, if you move that all the way to the left, you'll see that the horizon, the edge that joins between the sky and the scene will lighten up. And if I go all the way to the right, it will come down a bit darker. So I'm just going to probably go around about 70 with that. And color adjustment, that will adjust the, uh, the, 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 the foreground. So if I go all the way to the right, we'll try and match the color of the sky to the foreground. If I go all the way to the left, it have no match at all. It stays the original color of blue. I find that's a very, very good slider. In this case, I'm going all the way over to uh, 100%. So that's fine. So I'm going to leave it on duplicate layer. You have new layers as an option, and that will give you every single layer associated with the sky as a separate layer within, um, within Photoshop. In this case, I just want a, a layer with the sky on it. So I'm going to click OK. And there we go. The background copy is, is there. That's the one. If we turn that off, we have the original image, which is below it. If I turn that one back on, you can see the new image. I'm actually going to delete the rear image because the rear layer, because I don't want to bring all that information back into Lightroom in the background. So uh, I'm happy with that. I'm going to throw this back into Lightroom. So to do that, click File and then click Close. Do not click Save As there. File, Close, then Save, and it will put it back in Lightroom. So it's just saving there, as you can see. So once that's done, I will go back into Lightroom. There we go. And it's there already waiting for me. So it's pretty good. So let's just sort of finish off this image. Um, one of the things that I generally do as my workflow is I like to relight the scene myself. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna reduce the exposure. Yeah, I can type on the box here and put minus one. I'm gonna reduce it by minus one stop. Okay, so now that's, um, much darker i've got to bring the light back into the scene so uh, you might say well why why would you do that but bringing the light back yourself you can decide where the light goes you can decide how you're going to control that light that, that comes back in so i'm just going to open up the shadows again so we get a little bit of a sort of almost an hdr look um, and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to go into masks I'm going to select a radial gradient and I'm going to put quite a large radial gradient in the center here. So this sky will light up and this whole sort of center of the scene will light up. And I'm going to bring that up one stop. Okay. I'm also going to add a little bit more temp to that. There we go. A little bit of magenta tint. And I'm going to just see if bringing down the highlights just a little bit will help. Yeah, it does. Helps just a little bit. And really important one with skies, add some clarity. Really works really, really well. But I don't want all this light on these on the ships. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract um, the sky. Okay, so I'm going to select sky, but then I'm going to click um, invert. There you go. So I'm only I'm not lighting the, the 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 boats, the vessels. I can do that separately in a moment. 
so that's looking pretty good that bright glow does need to be sort of copied a little bit onto the water around here so we're going to create a new mask we're going to go to radial gradient we're going to pull out a radial gradient to go in here okay so we're just going to put it there we're going to bring up the exposure quite a bit about one 1.6 we're going to add in the color and the magenta to get that balance <clears throat> Don't want to go too much, just uh, back that magenta off just a little bit. And I'm just going to bring that brightness down just a little bit there. But I am going to increase the saturation. That looks good. So quite happy with that. Now, what we want to do is we also want to lighten up the side of this boat. So again, I'm going to create a new radial gradient. I'm going to pop it on the side of this boat here like so and I'm going to light it from this end this way um, so when I bring up the exposure now you can see with a bit of contrast and uh, I'm probably just going to add a little bit of open the shadows a bit and I'm going to bring that color up to match as well you see it's just added that bit of color to match that maybe a little bit magenta just to match it in but I don't really want to light up the sky anymore over here so I am going to subtract the sky there we go from that from that shot there so that boat's now now lit up over there so we're getting there i think we're almost there but i'd like to do something with this foreground so i'm going to create another radial gradient and i'm going to pop a big radial gradient down here with the dot almost at the center of it almost at the bottom and bring that from side to side and now when i open this up you'll see that the the the, the seaweed and the the sand underwater will as i gradually bring that up it will light up and it'll add a foreground element I'm going to add a bit of contrast to that and i am going to add a little bit of saturation make that that green pop a little bit more and i'm going to add some clarity not too much there we go and that gives you this sort of foreground element i could even raise that up a little bit further just to blend it with the light that we've got going on up there okay now just to sort of finish off I, I think we just need to add a little bit of extra light here and there and we need to make the sky pop a little bit more so I'm going to create a brush and in this brush I am going to um, I'm going to put the feather at 100% and I'm going to put the flow at 50% with the density at 100% so we're going to paint gradually um, I'm then going to, sorry, I didn't mean to click that. I'm going to add some exposure, one stop. I'm going to add some, a um, little bit of shadow, down a little bit on the highlights, a bit of contrast there. And um, this is the interesting one for skies. Take the white and just add a little bit of white. So it actually picks up on the brighter areas and some clarity. Always add clarity to skies, always look great. So I'm just going to take a smaller brush and I'm just going to go along these sort of trails of, of illuminated clouds here. Just, just picking them up, just coming out through there. That one didn't work. You can see it too clearly. So I'm going to control or command Z to undo that and then just go back in. That looks pretty good. Now I'm going to take a bigger brush and I'm going to um, go to the top here. I'm going to click the uh, whilst we're on brush we're going to um, click auto mask you see it here auto mask we're still in that brush now what auto mask does is it tries to stick to whatever you're lighting so for example the cross in this brush if I put it on that bright cloud and I paint it will only lighten the bright cloud area same here you see so I can re emphasize it even more if I want to, it's a little bit bright. I'm just going to bring that down a little bit. There we go. And just add in some saturation and a little bit more clarity. There we go. And I'm just going to pick up again on these, these lines. Same out here. Just picking up on these brighter areas, keeping that cross on the areas we want to light. You see how that works. Look, it works well. Same out here. That's looking pretty good, just in, in the center there as well. That's good. So we've got the sky really popping. But what we can also do is this, this light of line here in the water, we can also brighten that up as well, coming through there and just picking up on those lines. So just adding that in 
you can see these sort of slightly lighter areas down here we can also add a little bit into these areas here just to really just to pick up where the light is it just brings a little bit more detail to the to the whole image okay well i think we're pretty close i might just create one more brush here and um in this brush feather still at 100 flow still at 50 just going to add a little bit of exposure a little bit of contrast a little bit of clarity and i just want to pick these boats up a little bit more over here just i can paint those a little bit more there we go just to brighten the the boats up a little more detail there so they stand out a little bit more in the image that's pretty good so now i've pretty well got towards the end i'm just going to crop it in a little bit more i think we just need a little bit less of everything just to make it work yeah not quite square at this side here i'm just going to check to see if there's a standard 16 by 10 there we go 16 by 10 standard size that works quite well just put the shoreline on the center line there hit return and i think just to finish off this image i'm going to um, add in a post cross crop vignette which is under effects just going to bring that in minus 30 it's quite harsh but whilst you're in the post crop vignette vignette down below you'll see a slider called feather take that to 100 percent. just feather that that uh, vignette out just a little bit and then find where it is i think we're at minus 25 actually works quite well here so i'm going to go back to the 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 basic functions at the top i'm going to um bring up the exposure just a little bit to minus 0.85 i'm going to add in a bit of contrast plus 10 i'm going to add a little bit of clarity plus 10 on clarity as well and a tiny bit of texture maybe one or two just to make that sort of pop a little bit there um, i'm going to try the vibrance i think we've got enough saturation we're going to try and add in a little bit more vibrance yeah not too much probably about probably about plus 20 yeah and then i just want to be sure this green here is not too strong so i'm going to go down to the hsl color in saturation i'm going to go to the green slider and i'm just going to back the green slider off a little bit down to minus 60 and that just takes away a bit a bit of that green hue there um and then do we need to sharpen this i don't know let's, let's try a little bit of sharpening um say 30 that looks fine yeah, I'm just going to go back into crop. I'm just going to bring this down a little bit just to balance a little bit better. There we go. Maybe even a little bit more in the crop just to bring that over to the center like that. Yeah, and um, you know, you can keep fiddling with these things and uh, trying to get it right. I might want to put just a bit more blue in the top of the sky. I'm going to go back into mask, create a mask, linear gradient, come down from the top and then all I'm going to do is add some blue into the top there there we go just minus minus 25 just to bring that blue in at the top I think that works works quite well uh, and I might even do the same at the bottom create another linear gradient bring it in from the bottom and just add a little bit of blue in there just to balance it off just take a little bit of that uh, magenta out so it's blue not purple and that's so uh, we're going to come in at minus 16 on that and i'm going to come in minus five on the blue there we go i am going to stop there so hopefully hopefully that works well let's put it in full screen just to make sure yeah no i'm i'm really quite quite happy with that so um if we look at the uh the before and that's where we were before uh, with the image and we look at it after let it clear there we go so quite interesting nice sky replacement quite nice to work with so anyway i hope you enjoyed uh, this this video a little bit quicker than normal um if you do like 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 what i've done here in the video please like like the video uh, that would be great help for me and uh, 
And if you like what I'm doing on YouTube, I'd love you to subscribe, uh, to follow me along the way. Always open to suggestions, uh, always open to comments. I will be getting back into some more day to nights, um, but I have had a number of requests to look at how to, to do these, uh, these sky replacements um, using the basic tools that you get within uh, Photoshop. So I, I hopefully that was that was helpful and uh, I look forward to getting back into day tonight and we'll we'll do that in the next video. So um, yeah, I'll say bye bye for now.